Welcome guys, it is the Axeman here, and today we're going to be looking at every creature in Ark Survival Evolved. We're going to go A to Z, go down the list, and have a look at them all. Uh, we're not going to do any of the bosses, so it's just the land creatures and uh, the water creatures we're going to do. Now, this took a very long time to set up and record, so if you do enjoy it, please, please, please smash the thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe as well if you're new, and uh, ring the bell to enable notifications. And then comment down below if there's a creature on this list that you didn't even know existed, you've never seen before, or maybe you've learned something new, or if you think I've missed a creature off, which I'm pretty sure I've not, but I may have, whack that down below as well. And uh, yeah, enough of me talking. Let's uh, have a look at uh, what's going on then. Alright, start off then with the Akatina, the little snail found in the swamp, gives you some menning paste, you need to tame it using veggie cakes. The Allosaurus, normally found around mountain-ish areas, although depending on what map you're on, they can be found in different places. Uh, they're normally in a pack, I would recommend taming a group of these so they get their pack bonus and it makes them a lot stronger. The Ankylosaurus or the Anki, uh, these are found around the mountains uh, the majority of the time as well. Highly recommend getting these, especially for harvesting metal. The Areno or the Spider, normally found in caves. If you're on Ragnarok, it's normally found around the volcano. Uh, not overly useful. They do have a web which does slow creatures down. Some people use them for taming or trapping people on PvP, but not the greatest creature right now. The Archer, I can't pronounce his full name, so it's just going to be the Archer. This is a parachute bird. You find it in the redwoods, normally running up some trees. Uh, you pretty much grab onto its ankles and it acts as a parachute. The Argentavus, now this can be found around mountains, around snow. Uh, it's kind of uh, an all-purpose flyer. It can be used to carry creatures. It can be used to carry uh, weighty resources. So if you're up a mountain, you've got some metal, you can use him to fly it back to base. The Arthropora or the Centipede. Now this creepy little bugger is uh, mainly used for PvP as it can damage uh, your metal and your tech structures. N more often than not, it's found in caves. Uh, depending on what map of course but it's normally caves uh, passive tame you need some bug repellent for that the space whale or the astrocetus i think as i was saying that one uh, found on genesis in the lunar biome to tame these you need to get one of them uh, tech skiffs or hovercrafts what they're called and get a cannon and shoot them uh, at their face kind of like you would with the titanosaur this is a massive huge trophy creature. The Baryonyx, normally found around the swamp area, has a really annoying stun attack once it's in the water, which will uh, stop you in your tracks, being unable to move for a few seconds. The Basilisk, now this is found on Aberration. It's normally burrowed into the ground. You can uh, see it normally with its uh, little tail poking out. Uh, they are very hidden sometimes. Uh, you want to tame these uh, by chucking rock drake eggs uh, on the floor, and it will come 
up and eat them and uh, tame up over time. But the Beazle Bufo, I believe that's how I was saying it, it's the frog, it's found uh, in the swamp the majority of the times, has a useful feature where if you attack uh, bugs that drop chitin, it will uh, change that into cementing paste, so you don't have to go and make that yourself. The Bloodstalker, or the Bog Spider, found on Genesis in the bog area, it's normally hiding up in the trees, it will grab you off your mount and suck you in with its web, uh, you should have blood packs on you, it will feed off of them and tame up very slowly. Alright, the Bronto then, a creature that's been around since like the beginning, very much in need of a uh, TLC. Uh, you use this really for just kind of getting berries. Uh, if you do want to make a battle Bronto, there is a platform saddle where you can place all sorts of stuff on the back if you're into uh, PvP and you want to go and destroy some base with some torrents on the back. The Bulbdog, one of my favorite creatures from Aberration. Uh, easy passive tame, found uh, around the starting area of Aberration. You just got to whack some seeds in its butt and it works as a light pet, which uh, is useful against re Keepers and nameless and such. Carbonimus, I can't pronounce it, the giant turtle, uh, sort of a beginner creature and also a PvP creature. Uh, you can use this early on game, they're normally found on the beaches and stuff, you can knock it out and store lots of stuff inside it, or if you're into PvP, they uh, are very tanky and you can uh, drop these onto people's bases and uh, drain their turrets of all their bullets and stuff. Carno, another creature very much in need of a TLC, kind of looks a bit outdated this is kind of an early uh, carnivore tame you want to go for. Not uh, overly too hard to knock out, but it's not overly too strong. I like the Castroides, I think as I was saying that one, the beaver, you want to use this if you are in need of wood. These harvest wood really well, and they also make it way less, so you can carry more with it. They also have beaver dams in the wild, which have stuff uh, like cement and paste and silica pearls in, so definitely recommend raiding some of them. The Shalicopherium, or something along them lines. This is a beer drinker. To tame this, you're going to want to uh, feed it beer, which is a very weird thing for a creature to eat. It's kind of a uh, beefy creature. It can throw stones and stuff. Other than that, there's not real too much of a uh, use for it right now. The Compi, these annoying little buggers, you've probably all witnessed them if you've played Ark, normally hang around in packs and they normally attack you on the worst possible time. Uh, to tame you, you have to knock them out and place some primey in it real quick. Don't really have much of a use though. The Deodon, or the Hell Pig, as it's been nicknamed. You normally find this in the snow area. They're used for healing creatures, which is really good if you're doing boss battles. Um, also, if you're doing PvP, you bring it with you, keep it in your base, and it'll just keep healing your creatures. It does consume a lot of food, so make sure you're keeping them fed. And next up, we have the Disgusting Death Worm. For some reason, we can't spawn it in and keep it here, so he's just going to kind of uh, fly around like that. Uh, found in the desert, uh, they just pop out and attack you randomly. Really annoying, pretty strong, but they are a good way to get the death worm horns, which you can use to tame the mantis. Right, the Deinonychus then, only found on the Valgiro DLC slash map. Uh, they're pretty much a feathered raptor. To tame them, you have to raid a nest and steal their egg. They have a bleed attack damage, they can latch onto big creatures, and they can climb up cliffs. The Dilophosaurus, a very early beginner tame. You can pretty much knock these out with your fist, chuck some meat in it, and it's going to be a little sort of defense. Also, really easy to kill if you're in need of meat early on. All right, the Diametrodon then, found in the swamp. This is used as a AC unit. If you can't make the AC unit, uh, you can have a bunch of these, and you can have them to find the right temperature to hatch some eggs. The Dimorphodon, normally, again, found around the swamp, although it does kind of go off into jungles and stuff. Uh, these are really useful if you want to attack a player that's riding a dino as they will go and attack the player rather than the dino. The Diplocolis, I think as I was saying that, this goofy looking guy, look at his little eyes just there, found in the swamp you can um, suck oxygen out of it when you're uh, swimming on him. Little, little weird, but that's what it does. The Diplodocus or the Diplodocus. This is a playful creature that just wants to play with everything. It has a saddle which can hold, I think it's up to 12 people. So it's like a mini bus. It can transport people around. It also has very high health. So it also can be used to drain turrets of its bullets. All right, the Dire Bear then. So this is found in the Redwoods. Pretty easy to tame, quite powerful as well. Its main ability is to harvest honey without being stung by the bees. So the Dire Wolf 
wolf next. Uh, it's normally found in the snow or the tundra areas. It's uh, a pack creature, so they're normally found in groups. Uh, another good reason to tame these is you don't actually need a saddle. So if you're early on and you can find a, a decent level one, you can get one without making a saddle. Although that does mean it doesn't have any armor value. The dodo then, everyone's favorite creature in Ark. A very beginner creature. They knock around on the beaches. Uh, you can use them to harvest your meat and your hide very early on. They do poop a lot of eggs out. So if you're in need of some eggs, you can tame a bunch of these. You can literally knock them out with your fist and shove a berry up its butt and it's all good. The Dodicarus, or the Dodic as some of us call it, this is used mainly for gathering stone. It can gather stone. It also means stone weighs less when it's inside of it. Uh, this is normally found around the mountains. The Dung Beetle then, normally found in caves or if you're on Ragnarok on the volcano. Uh, this has the ability to change uh, feces or poop into fertilizer. You just got to whack some uh, poop inside of it and it will produce a little bit of oil and a little bit of fertilizer so you can use it on your crops. The Enforcer then from Extinction this is a creature that can teleport and climb up walls and stuff uh, you can't actually tame it you have to build it you need an enforcer blueprint the equus or the horse can be found pretty much all over the map they don't really have a designated spawn point uh, the way you tame these is you need some carrots you've got a feed one up to it and then you're going to have to break it by uh, riding onto it and just feeding it a carrot to calm it down every now and then. Really good mount for getting about on. The Featherlight, another glow pet from Aberration, tamed exactly the same as the Bulb Dog. It just uses a different seed, has the same abilities, keeps uh, makes the Reaper and the Nameless a little bit weaker and easier to kill. The Ferox from Genesis. Now this cute little adorable creature is found in the snow. Uh, you can tame it by just knocking it out, feeding it some berries. Once you feed it some some element though it will transform into this massive werewolf and that is pretty freaking strong the gacha this is from extinction this has a ability to give you resources and loot all you got to do is feed it uh, anything really stone metal whatever it likes it'll poop out a crystal you crack that open and you can get resources you can get uh, blueprints weapons all sorts of stuff really really useful the gallimimus this is found normally around the redwoods it's a horrible looking creature they really need to do a rework on that uh, this has a two person saddle someone can ride it someone can shoot off the back uh, it's mainly used for its speed other than that not that useful the gas bag from extinction now this has the ability to inflate and blow air out of itself it can glide and sort of fly around using this when it is inflated it takes like hardly any damage and it's kind of its uh, defense the giant queen bee so these are normally found in the redwood area or anywhere there's a beehive you just damage the beehive a bit she'll pop out and then you have to passive tamer you can use this to transform her back into a hive in your home base and then you can gather honey that way the giganotosaurus or the giga this is a apex predator in the wild these are really strong and they will kill you in a couple of bites uh, once they are tamed they do lose some of their power but they are still very powerful if they do take a certain amount of damage they will turn on you and they will attack you and your creatures and your base so just be careful the gigapithecus the giant bigfoot monkey guy uh, found normally in the redwoods uh, you can tame it just passive tame put some berries in his butt he can be used on aberration for climbing vines which is pretty neat he can also throw a player so if you want to get inside someone's base and they don't have a ceiling he can throw you inside the glow tail another aberration glow pet creature one of my favorite ones because he has such a cute little face same as the bullbrog and the featherlight you tame it with seed although this one is found in a cave so it's a little harder to get the griffin exclusive to ragnarok a very useful tame for pvp and pve has a dive bomb attack which is pretty useful it can carry stuff it can fight it's a good all-round flying creature the Hesperornis then, this little duck creature, it uh, actually poops out a golden egg every now and then, which if you eat will give you a big boost in uh, experience. Uh, not many people use these, but they are pretty useful if you know how to use them right. So the hyena don or the little pup, they're normally found in packs. To tame them, you've literally got to pet them. Um, they also have a saddle which you can put meat inside and it'll keep it fresh. The Ichthyornis or the seagull, we all hate this creature. It flies around on the beaches and it steals shit out of your inventory and eats it. To tame it, you just got to knock it out. Uh, once it is tamed, you can send him to go and fish for you. He will go get his fish and he'll bring it back for you. The Iguanodon, kind of a uh, useless tamer. I've not really found a good use for them. They're kind of early ish tames all those saddle level is i believe in the 40s or summer can gather berries can do a 
little bit of fighting, but not really that useful. The Jaboa from Scorched Earth. Really easy to tame. Give him a few punches, put some bows in his butt, and he's your friend. He has little calls that will warn you of a approaching weather uh, condition. So you've got to kind of try and learn which one is which so you know what's going on. The jug bug also found on Scorched Earth is a water jug bug and an oil jug bug. Uh, water ones have blue on the butts, uh, oil have red. You literally go up to them, press E and you can either drink the water out or take oil out. A good way to survive on Scorched Earth. The Kairuku or the penguin found in the snow area. You can use these uh, to make a, yourself an organic polymer farm. You can either tame them and then uh, breed them and kill the babies and get organic polymer. Or you can just go to the snow, kill them off and get all the polymer you need. The Capra Sucus or the Capra, if you've been in the swamp, you would have definitely seen us or come in contact with it. It will literally dive out of the water and dismount you from your creature and try and swim away and eat you. Can be really useful if used against another player. You can uh, get them off their creature, take them away, eat them without that creature coming to chase you. The Carcanos, this is from Aberration, the giant crab. This can be used to uh, pick up creatures in both of its claws. You can have two at the same time. It has a very big uh, launch jump, so you can jump over stuff really well. To tame it, you do have to uh, shoot like catapults uh, into its face. Uh, if you're not careful and you hit its body, it will die very quickly. So it's a little bit of a hard tame, but definitely worth it. Yeah, Kentrosaurus and it's pretty much a base defense creature. If it uses its tail on a small to medium creature, it's gonna, uh, I don't know the way to skewer them on its tail. Uh, also. So if a creature does bite the Kentro, they do uh, they take uh, additional damage due to the spikes hurting them. So this is the Lamprey. This is from Aberration. It hides in the water and it uh, jumps onto you and sucks your blood kind of like the leech does. Although it does have a benefit. As soon as it's stuck to you, it will act as a glow pair. So if you do not have a glow pair and you get one of these stuck to you, you now have a glow pair. Although it does drain your health. The leech, this horrible thing, lives in the swamp. They will attach themselves to you and your dinos. They will start sucking your blood and draining you if there is a diseased one uh, they will give you disease and get your swamp fever and then you will pass that and contaminate the whole server the limantria or the moth found on scorched earth this is kind of a useless tame in my opinion doesn't have very good stamina doesn't have good speed doesn't have good weight and it can't really fight the lystrosaurus or the lystro this cute little guy is uh found normally on the beaches very easy to tame very easy to kill so it's easy meat uh as soon as you've tamed it you can pet it will do a little flip and it'll give you some xp boost the magmasaur new to genesis uh, to tame one of these you're gonna have to go to the lava biome you're gonna have to go inside the volcano and there's gonna be eggs chilling there these are really tough really strong they are not for the faint hide the mammoth this is found in the snow slash the tundra area this is used mainly to gather wood uh, wood weighs less in it apart from that they don't really have that much of a good usage the managama then from from extinction found in the snow biome you'll see these jumping around in the sky everywhere a very good creature to travel on they have a crazy ice breath which is really powerful a very good creature to get definitely recommend getting one of these on extinction so the mantis found on scorched earth in the desert to tame one of these you're going to want to put a death horn death worm horn up his butt and he will love you long time for that uh, once he has tamed he can hold tools such as a pickaxe and stuff and he can uh, go harvesting for you the giant turtle i can never pronounce this name the mega cleon or something like that this massive turtle uh, found on the ocean biome on genesis uh, to tame it you want to get the uh, i think they're like the parrot fish swarms to follow you and then they'll start nibbling on him i guess they clean him uh, you just got to make sure you defend all the fish that are attacking him. Uh, he's pretty strong, very, very slow, but you can build bases on the back of him. But the Megalania then, the giant lizard creature found in the caves. Uh, they can be hiding on top of the ceilings and they do tend to blend in very well. So do be careful of these. They do have a rabies bite as well, which can be uh, very devastating. The Megaloceros then, the deer, the stag, whatever you want to call it, found in the snow. Pretty easy to tame. Uh, they are used mainly for gathering thatch. Uh, only the males can gather thatch. You'll uh, know which ones are male by the uh, the horns. So the Megalosaurus, a sleepy dino, can be found in the caves or out in the open on Ragnarok. 
They sleep during the day, but at night time they come alive and they get boosted attack and everything. They are very, very strong at night. If you're going to tame one of these, tame one during the day as they're slow and you can literally do it on foot with not a problem at all. The Meganora or the Dragonfly, I'm sure you've all witnessed these. They hang around pretty much everywhere in the jungles, in the swamps. They'll come and attack you when you are most vulnerable, it seems. They're a very good way to get Kitan though. So if you do kill a creature and there's a dead body there, they may be drawn to it and then you can uh, kill them and take Kitan. The Megapharon then, the giant sloth slash anteater creature found in the snow or the uh, redwoods, depending on what map you're on, used mainly to fight the Broodmother as, as they kill uh, insect creatures, they get this boost and they go on a rampage and they become really strong. So very, very effective against the Broodmother. This is the mech, I thought I'd include it because why the hell not? This is found on Extinction, you have to build it, you ride it, it's like a like you're a power ranger inside of it. It's used to do the uh, King Titan boss fights. So the Mesopithecus, I believe that's how we're saying it, the little monkey guy can be found normally in the jungle areas. He's very skittish, he will run away as soon as you get close to him. Very useful for PvP in though. If you throw him through a window in a base, he will unlock the door for you and let you in. So if you are a noob on PvP and you've built windows, then this guy is going to get in and unlock all the doors for you. The Microraptor, as some of you know, my most hated creature in Ark right now. Found normally in a 2 or 3, they will launch themselves at you, knock you off your creature, stun you and then your creature will run off and try and fight it and then you come back to consciousness and another one will come and stun you and it's kind of rinse and repeat very very annoying although very useful if you're doing that against a, an opposing player. The Morellatops found on Scorched Earth. This is pretty much a giant camel. They're really easy to tame and they store water in their humps. So if you do want to use this to travel and go across the desert, you can just uh, start drinking out of it. So very useful, especially early game. The Mush Shops then, kind of a source of food mainly, although they uh, did accidentally make it so you could ride these so they can be used as a good mount they do have the ability to gather additional resources from creatures and you can level it up so they get uh, say more polymer from a, a penguin than a normal creature would Right next we've got the Nameless, for some reason this won't spawn in and stay tame so I'll just show you a wild one. These are found on Aberration, uh, they'll go big like just like that one did. Uh, they'll spawn loads in, they'll attack you unless you have a Glow Pet. Glow Pets scare them away. The Onic or the Bat, normally found in caves, uh, pretty easy to kill. Although if it does bite you, it has a chance of inflicting rabies on you. So do be careful when finding these and letting them get too close. Everyone's favourite Otter, this creature is freaking adorable. Adorable. These can be found in uh, small rivers and ponds of water around the maps. They have the ability to uh, keep you warm if they're around your neck. They act as kind of a scarf, so they'll keep you warm in the snow. So the Oviraptor then, uh, its only use really is makes uh, your creatures lay eggs faster. That's all it does. Apart from that, it's uh, next to useless. The Ovis or the Sheep, this thing is freaking gorgeous. I love this. They're really cute. Uh, they are used to pretty much make a mutton farm or a, um, a wool farm. Kill these, you'll get loads of mutton. You can cut their fur and you'll get loads of wool, so you can use that instead of pelt. The Pachycephalosaurus or the Pachy, another creature that which is due a TLC. This um, hard-headed creature can knock creatures out, although it's very unlikely as it normally kills them. Uh, they're kind of early tames, but not that useless as they're not very strong. The Pachyrhinosaurus then, this will drain all of the creature's stamina. If uh, it's threatened, it will release this kind of uh, spores out of it, which is very weird. Not overly useful when tamed, not very strong. They're kind of just there. The Paraceratherium then, found in the swamp. Uh, it does have a platform saddle, so you can make a little base on the back or add some weapons. So depending on what you want to use it for, it could be a battle creature or just a little home base. So the Parasaur then, a very derpy looking creature, has the ability to detect when an enemy is nearby in your base. Uh, very useful for early tames as well, as they don't fight back, they always run away, put some berries in. Easy tame, can be used to gather berries as well. So the Pego, a very annoying, ugly little creature, found pretty much all over the map. They will steal stuff from your inventory. They normally go for the last slot of your hotbar first, then after that it's just random. If you get attacked by multiple ones, they're just going to steal your stuff and run off in different directions and it's really freaking annoying. The Pelagorn is then so the water bird, it can actually land on the water and uh, kind of swim. 
doesn't have very good weight or speed so it's not really that useful. The Fiomia, the elephant slash pig looking creature, this is used mainly to get poop. If you feed it loads of stim berries, it will just poop like a madman and you can use that for fertilizer. The Phoenix only found on scorched earth and only during a heat wave. There's only one on the map at a time. They are very rare and very hard to tame. To tame them, you pretty much have to keep lighting it on fire until it becomes your friend. If you put meat inside of it or metal, it will cook that and smelt it and it also drops little silicapels for you. The Procopsodon or the Kangaroo can actually carry an additional character inside of of its pouch which is really neat uh, very speedy has a very good jump very good mount to get about on Right, the Trenodon, another creature very much in need of a TLC. I'd say this is very much more PvP focused. It's kind of a little Spitfire. Uh, you can use your spin attack and do a lot of damage on people. Doesn't have much health though, doesn't have much stamp, but it does have uh, some pretty decent speed. The Polonoscorpius, I can never pronounce this one, the Scorpion pretty much. Uh, normally found around mountain areas, very good to uh, get chitin from. Taming them, they have a, uh, a poison sting on them. Uh, apart from that, though, not too much of a use. The Polovia found around the snow areas more often than not. It will be hiding in a little ground of dirt and it will jump out and dismount you and stun you. Can be used really well on a PvP server. You can hide these all around your base and if someone comes in, they can all jump out and attack him. They're like little mini mines. So this is a Quetzal. This does have a uh, platform saddle, so you can build a base on the back of it. You can have a sky base. Also, you can build weapons on it so it could be an attack base uh, can be used to carry creatures on the back of it as well if you want to transport from one side of the map to the other so the raptor they added the ability for it to pounce and pin us down if you are a new player these will be the death of you these are all over the place they are really annoying um, but they are pretty useful if you tame them yourself the reaper then found on aberration this crazy looking alpha predator will live down in the radiation zone it will come out of the ground and attack you there's normally nameless around it the only way to really damage this is have a glow pet as the light will um make it weaker if you have no glow pet you've probably not got much of a chance of fighting this thing so the t-rex everyone knows the t-rex this is probably one of the best creatures in arc an all-round good creature not too hard to tame it's got good health good attack used for pretty much all the bosses uh, used for meat runs i'd highly recommend just getting this creature um as soon as you can pretty much the rock drake so found on aberration you have to go way down into the radiation zone and steal its egg as soon as you touch that egg a whole swarm of rock drakes are going to come after you so you best be fast so the rock elemental or rock golem first introduced on scorched earth there's different uh varieties of it now we've got a chalk uh, we've got an ice we've got a lava one tame it you want to shoot a cannon at its face so you kind of want to get it in a trap to do that he's useful for keeping your base protected as you can disguise him as a rock and then as soon as uh, an enemy gets close he will pop out and start attacking the roll rat from aberration uh, this is kind of the beaver of aberration it can get uh, wood for you and it makes it way a little lighter inside of it just have a crazy uh, saddle which makes you spin in a ball and you can go zoom in across the map it's pretty insane so the saber tooth tiger the saber the kitty whatever you want to call it kind of a really nice nice looking creature very easy to tame very early on this is a sarco found in the swamp as you can imagine uh, recently had a TLC so it does have some new moves it has like a death roll it has the ability to um, do a complete 180 so if someone's behind it it can jump around and attack it pretty much everyone's favorite glow pet this is the shine horn it's freaking adorable it's probably one of the cutest creatures in the whole game it does exactly the same as the bulb dog the feather light and the glow tail the snow owl then from extinction found in the, uh, the snow biome this is a, a really really good creature to have I'd recommend getting this as soon as you can has the ability to to heal your creatures it's got some speed it's got decent weight on it it's got decent attack this is an all-round perfect creature that you should use on extinction it's a very good creature to uh, attack when you're near water as soon as he touches water he gets a boost he gets a speed increase as well so very good if you're attacking a base near water or a creature that's near water stegosaurus then has two uses number one gathering berries it's pretty good at number two if you are riding it and uh, tourists are targeting on a, a human or a player it it will have to go through the stegos uh, plates first so you kind of got like a little shield against the uh, the bullets so the tape jar or the tapahara so this does have a tech saddle so it's mainly going to be used uh, for later on in the game does have the ability to latch onto uh, cliff sides which is a, a pretty neat feature if you're going to try taming some stuff 
So the Terror Bird then, you've probably all seen these if you've played the game. They knock around in the snow biome or the redwoods. They normally hunt in packs and they're really kind of annoying. They do have the ability to glide. They can't fly, but they do glide pretty far. So the Verizino then, the herbivore equivalent of the T-Rex, easily can uh, take down a, a T-Rex. It can also harvest pretty much all the resources. Uh, you got your fiber, your fat, your berries, all that kind of stuff. So very useful to have. So the Fawny Dragon uh, from Scorched Earth can be found pretty much everywhere on the, on that map. Uh, it's kind of used just to get wood. Uh, it's not really much of a fighter, but it can be used as one. So the Phyla then, this creature is found in the Redwoods. It'll be hiding up a tree and it will jump down and pounce on you and knock you off your creature and eat your face. So do be careful. Once it is tamed though, it's a, an amazing creature to getting around on. Uh, it can climb up and over cliff sides, up trees and stuff. It's got good health, good attack, a very good all around creature. The Titan Boa then, or the snake, normally found in the swamp or in caves. They can actually be tamed. You've just got to drop some uh, fertilized eggs down for them and they'll sliver up and eat them. Um, not really too useful once they are tamed. They're not very strong or anything. The Titan Minera, I think as I was saying that, the little ant creature. Uh, you can't tame these, but they are very good uh, for harvesting chitin from. They're kind of found all over the map. They will attack you when you really kind of really don't want them to. The uh, Titanosaur then, this giant creature, I'm pretty sure you'd have seen one or two of these knocking about the map. To tame these, you're going to have to shoot cannonballs at its face, which is very difficult as it's always moving around. Once you do tame these on official servers they only last for a certain amount of days slash hours but they can however damage all structures tech included so the trike or the triceratops a very good creature to tame early on it can be used to fight off creatures it can be used to gather berries uh, a very good ideal creature to start with the trilobite you'll find this on the beaches uh, very good to get some uh, chitin from and sometimes some silica pearl the trudon then the most intelligent creature and the hardest to tame in my opinion to tame one of these you have to feed it live dinos it has to eat and kill live dinos once it's tamed it will be able to scout for you and tell you if there's nearby creatures or players the unicorn then so a very rare creature there's only one uh, on the map at a time it tames exactly the same as a horse everything's the same it's just got a horn on its head the Velon Dinosaur then from Extinction. This is a uh, turret creature, pretty much. Really easy to tame, found in the desert biome. And it's able to uh, use its frills and shoot little pin missiles out. The Vulture then from Scorched Earth. This has the ability, the same as kind of the Dimorphodon, to uh, attack the player rather than the actual dino. So very useful for PvP. So the Woolly Rhino found in the snow. It does have a charge ability. The longer you run uh, at a creature and then attack, the more damage you do. If you are running full sprint, these can do some serious damage. The Wyvern, first introduced on Scorched Earth. We have a Fire one, a Lightning one, a Poison one, and now we have a Ice one. To tame these, you have to find their nest. You have to steal their eggs. As soon as you take an egg, they're all going to come chase you. To raise these, you're going to need milk. So you're going to have to find a female, trank it out, and get the milk from it. They are a very good creature uh, for fighting, for carrying, for PvPing, a very good all-round creature. The Uteranus then found in the snow, a very useful creature, has two abilities. One is the Fear Roar, it will scare away smaller creatures. Uh, number two is the uh, Boost Roar, which will boost up your uh, dino's attack damage and make it take less damage. So very ideal for when you're taking on the bosses. So the Ammonite, normally found at the bottom of the ocean, if you do attack this, it will release a gas which will uh, attract every creature around it to come and attack you so avoid attacking these unless you really have to so we have the anglerfish then very creepy looking creature the reason you want to tame one of these is it gathers silica pearls really well and you get a whole bunch of them so the basiliosaurus my favorite water creature kind of big giant whale it will normally have mantas around it kill them off first and it's an easy passive tame does heal very quickly when it's uh, up near the surface as soon as you get deeper down it will start taking damage so just be aware of that so we have the jellyfish next now this creature has the ability to stun you and electrocute you off your mount so do be careful although you do want to start harvesting these as they give off biotoxin which is a form of narcotics this is a dunclosaurus now this creature has the ability to bite through stone so there is a pvp stone base in the water somewhere you can use this to chomp through that it can also be used to gather i believe it's oil and stone really well we have the eel next or the electrophorus or something like that another creature that has the ability to shock you and they normally hunt in packs and can be they can destroy you very quickly so be careful 
uh, when uh, swimming past these. So next up we have the erupted, oh, I can't remember I said, the sea scorpion. Normally lives on the bottom of the ocean, not too much of a threat. If you do want to fight them, do be careful, they do have a toxic bite. We have the Ichthyosaurus or the Dolphin, uh, a very good uh, first water tame to have. They are a passive tame, you just need to feed it some fish. They are very speedy, they don't really have much of attack, but the speed is enough to get you away from any bad situation. You have the Giant Lee Sichthyus, I believe that's how I was saying it like that. This massive huge whale is not really much of a threat. You can scrape off uh, prime fish meat from him if you just go up to it and press scrape, you'll get some meat and then you can go and use that to tame. So we have the Liprorodon, this is a magical creature the once tamed it will give you the ability to have better luck and you'll be able to get better loot from loot drops so if you do tame one of these you want to go deep sea hunting uh for loot drops as quick as you can so the manta this is a very speedy creature if you're looking for speed in the water i'd recommend getting one of these they can jump out the water not the strongest but very good for getting around very quickly megalodon's a very uh balanced creature you want if you're going to be playing around in the water he's got decent attack decent health decent speed he's going to be able to fend off uh, most of the stuff that attacks you in the water this is the mosasaur mosasaurus i'm not sure how we say that one this is the uh the apex predator in the sea uh it's gonna be very difficult to get one of these they're really deep down but they have really good health really good attack kind of the t-rex of the water so the piranha normally found in the swamp or in the ocean they normally attack in packs they're really annoying easy way to get fish meat from them though uh, also they can actually be tamed if you use a fish basket so we've got the plesiosaur normally found in pairs in the water it's kind of in the middle of a megalodon and a mosa not the strongest but definitely not the weakest the saber tooth salmon normally found in the river a very good way to get some prime fish meat from these guys also can be tamed with the fish basket so last up we have the two so the big giant squid this is uh, probably on par with the mosa it's very fast it's very powerful has a lot of health also very hard to tame all right there we go then every creature in arc survival evolved damn if you are still here after all that and you're not bored of my voice then well done have have a cookie i'm gonna give you a cookie uh, <laughs> but seriously if you did enjoy it or found it helpful useful you learned something new please consider leaving a like i really would appreciate it this thing did take me forever to do so i would appreciate uh, a like if you are new as well you can subscribe and you can also ring the bell if you want to be notified when we do more videos so uh yeah thanks for hanging out with me and i will catch you all in a bit